All right, guys, welcome to the next part in the Building a Rick and Morty app series. We're going to continue where we had left off, specifically taking a look at how we're going to get the data for these episode cells at the bottom here. So before we dig in, drop a like down below, comment hello for the YouTube algorithm, and let's continue. So let me actually move my Xcode over here so we're next to the simulator. And let me go ahead and just build and run, make sure we haven't changed or broken anything since we've last... Uh, met and let's come down here. So we actually do have the appropriate number of cells, but we're just not seeing them because we don't actually have a color set to it. So let me go ahead in here and let's actually set a color on the content view here. I'm gonna actually go ahead and make it system blue. The other thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is add a corner radius of perhaps eight and that's good enough for now so we'll go ahead and build and run and we should see the cards down here and just fyi i'm calling these cells a card so if that confuses you that's what the heck i'm talking about so so cool we need to get the data for each of these and i had briefly mentioned if we go to the view model for each of these episodes we actually only have a url so what the heck gives well it turns out that the way the API is structured, it doesn't actually return to us information about the API, although if I was to be building this API, I would at least return the title, but rather it returns to us a URL that points to another endpoint that has the information for a given episode. So it actually has ID, name, air date, episode, all of this jazz. And if I'm not mistaken, we're gonna actually want a model for this. And I don't recall if we created one already. So let's come into here. And under data types, we have an RM episode. And this is basically what we saw over there. So we have uh, you know, characters, URL, airtime, episode, all that stuff. So how are we gonna actually populate a view here without data? Well, we actually need to fetch the data. So we have n number of episodes so in this video particularly we're going to focus on dispatch groups as well as caching the data or briefly discussing it at least so cool so let's go to this view model where we have uh, passed in the episode episode data url and we want to go ahead and write a single function in here and that is going to be uh, public func and what we can go ahead and do here is we want to say fetch episode and we're going to want to refactor this momentarily uh, because we don't want to actually pass the episode back to the view when we say fetch episode what we want to do is we want to first start by creating a rm request from the url so to do that we're going to first unwrap the url say url is the episode uh, url here and respectively, we also want to create a RM request. And this is actually why we spent all that time building that failable initializer where we can pass in a URL. So we're going to go ahead and do this. And if we're able to create this request, we want to actually go ahead and send it. So I'm going to say created here. And we'll go ahead and actually make sure that it is being printed out. So we'll come down here and we should see created printout. And it looks like we don't in fact see it. So let's actually go ahead and uh, see why that is. Let's come up here and print out this URL. And we are gonna be doing several optimizations here, so just bear with me. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're gonna come into here. We will scroll down and we should see a URL printed out, but in fact, we do not. So let's see why that is. So I should be creating this uh, view model somewhere in the character detail view model. Let's go ahead and find it. So let's see, we have our view model here for the single episode, and then we have our character detail view model. All right, and here we actually map, and what we do is we say create a URL with this particular string and we should get a appropriate view model. So let me go ahead and let's see what's going on. Because down here we DQ the cells. Let's see where that cell is. It should be basically in the view. So let's open this up. We're gonna to go to the detail view and let's see where we actually return the cell. We should be returning it appropriately. All right, so here we actually register it and the data source I guess is the controller. So let me come over here into uh, the controllers folder and other and in here we are in fact returning 
the appropriate cell and printing out the, rather configuring it with the view model. So I'm gonna say view model, and let's just go ahead and just print that view model here. So we're gonna be printing out a single view model here. So I'm gonna move this up. So let's say that's a view model. That's a view model. And we're just gonna print it for the time being and make sure that we are in fact seeing our print statement here. So let me open up my console. And when I scroll down, I should see some prints. So cool, we do in fact see prints. And what we more specifically wanna see is when this configure function is called, uh, we want to actually print out the URL. So let's come into here. And inside of here, we are going to go ahead and say view model dot fetch episode. So we actually never called fetch episode, hence we never actually got that print here. So let's go ahead and give this a run once more and come down here. And we actually do successfully create the uh, RM request. So actually it was not an issue. I can get rid of this here. And I can actually also go ahead and just fix the indentation on this. And now that we've got a request, what we can actually go and do is say RM service shared. We want to execute this request. And I'm actually going to rename it to just be request. So we'll go ahead and call it a request here and what we expect to get back is basically an rm episode and then we have our callback here now there is an interesting problem with this design and before i get into it we need to understand a little bit about how cells work right for collection views or table views essentially that configure function is going to be called every single time that the cell is dequeued right so we certainly don't want to be fetching the data every single time. So this gives us an interesting choice. We can either have a flag in the view model that says, hey, have we fetched the data for that episode? And if we haven't, we can go fetch. Or if we're already fetching, we know we don't want to redundantly fetch. The other option that we do have at our disposal is we can actually uh, preemptively dispatch a request for all the episodes up front and they're going to be kind of behind the scenes they're going to be background fetches so you can actually have all the data ready by the time that these cells are actually shown on screen so let's go ahead and let's let's set this up in a way where you know if we haven't actually uh, started the fetch we'll start it and then we're going to do the optimization i just described and hopefully that made sense but let me come into here and say private um, private var is fetching is going to be false. And we're going to verify here that is fetching is false. And if it is false, we can continue. And here we're going to say is fetching is true, just like that. And in the callback here, what I'll go ahead and do is for now, I'm just going to switch on the results and what we basically do in all of our uh, API calls to just make sure everything is working. We're just going to print out success dot maybe ID and that should be the ID of the actual um, episode that we get back. And otherwise we are going to print out a string describing the failure. So when we go ahead and build and run, we should come down here and see two IDs. So we get one and two, which is awesome. We're getting the data back. And as I scroll, we should start seeing more prints there appropriately going up to eight. But when I scroll back, we shouldn't see uh, the prints again because we should not be sending the request out again. So we certainly don't, and that is awesome. So let's actually build it this way. And then later when we talk about caching, we're gonna go into dispatch groups. So once we have the data in here for the particular episode, what we can go ahead and do is say private var episode is an RM episode, which will be nullable, right? By default, we don't have it. And in the success case, we're gonna go ahead and say we wanna assign it. So we're going to say self.episode. Episode will be our model here. Now we don't wanna leak memory. I don't wanna retain cycles. So we're gonna capture self in a weak capacity. And what we essentially want to do is we now, now that we actually have this uh, episode, what we can actually do is we need to tell our view that, hey, we now have the model so you can go ahead and refresh yourself, try to configure yourself. So how do we do that? We can do it in a couple different ways. We can either use a delegate pattern, but I want to introduce a new pattern so we continue our learning. 
So what I'll do in here is I will say did set for this model. We've seen did set before. Basically, this will get kicked off as soon as something is assigned to this. And I am going to unwrap it. I'll say our model is this episode. And what we are going to do is we are going to have another public function on here. And this is what's known as kind of the publisher and subscriber pattern. So we're going to have a function on here. And this is going to be register for data. And this is going to take a block. You can call it block or I was going to call it completion there, but maybe block is a better term. And we want to get something back returning void. And what do we actually want to get back? Well, if we think about it, let's look at what properties the actual episode has on it, right? What do we want to show in each of these blue cards? Well, maybe we'll show the name. Maybe we'll show the air date as well as the episode. Let's come over here and see what it is. So it looks like we have a name, the date, and then the episode. So maybe that's what we want to show. So essentially, what I'm going to go ahead and do is we are going to create um, a protocol here. And this protocol is going to represent uh, a episode rendering. So I'm going to call it RM episode uh, data render. And essentially, this protocol is going to define the signature of what data we need. So we are going to want the episode, which will be of type string, and we will be able to get it. We're also going to want uh, the name. Let me actually move name up here. And we're also going to want air date. Now, when you're looking at this, it's pretty apparent that this is a subset of the properties in RM request, and we can actually extend this to conform to this particular protocol. And now what I can actually do is I can say when we register for data, what we want to get back is that protocol instead of the model directly. This way we can hide all of the other stuff inside of uh, the model, right? Now that we have this here, we want to call this block. So to call the block, we want to hang on to the block in the global scope, right? So here we are going to create another private uh, variable, and this is going to be data block. And its type is going to be a block, same signature, and it's going to be optional since by default it is nil. And here I'll say self dot block data block will be our block. And once we actually assign to this episode, I can go ahead and say self dot data block, and I can actually pass in the model. So let's go ahead and build and see if it yells at me. So it does indeed yell at me because we don't need this here. We can actually probably get rid of this here if I'm not mistaken. Yep, we can get rid of that. The reason we need the question mark here for nullability is this data block is indeed optional, AKA nullable. The other thing that I'll call your attention to is we're calling this on the background queue because we're in our async uh, operation. So as a result of this, we'll want to go and actually update our UI. So we do want to go ahead and bump this onto the main queue. Now I'm going to jump back into my view file here for the episode collection uh, view cell. And before I go ahead and say fetch episode, I am going to register for a block. And here, what we're going to get is the data, and I will just print out string describing data. And this way, what should happen is every time that fetch episode is called, we'll come into here, and what we'll want to do is we'll hit this callback. Now, if we don't hit this callback, in this case, you know, we're not doing anything, but there is an unhandled edge case here. And that edge case is, well, what if we've already fetched the data and the user brings the cell back into view? Well, what we'll do here is we'll just go ahead and say if let model is our episode, if we actually have our episode, we'll manually call the uh, data block and pass in the model. All right, let's go ahead and give it a build and run and let's see if we get our prints out appropriately. So let me go to the info screen. Let me open up the console. And let me scroll down here. We should see two models printed out, which is an RM episode, which is beautiful. We actually do see it printed out. Now, why do we actually see the whole model? Because we did this protocol thing, didn't we? Well, that's actually kind of the trick here, right? While we're only gonna have these three uh, properties available to us, 
the backing object we're actually passing in is indeed the entire model, which is by design. So let's go into our view again. And instead of printing out a string describing this, what I can actually print out is on this, we can do uh, the name of the episode. We can print out the error date as well as the, what else is on here? As well as the episode as itself, which will be like the season and episode number. So go ahead and give it a build and run again comes down here and we get our data. And if you just wanna see what else is available, if you just do data dot, you'll see that nothing else actually is in fact exposed. And that's how we can actually control um, kind of masking other properties. So that's where I'll pause uh, this video or end this video, I should say. In the next video, we're gonna talk about actually building out the cell, we'll build it out. And we wanna be able to click into these episodes because what you did see earlier here is that episodes themselves have a bunch of information on them, like characters, and you know we wanna show all of that stuff as well. And um, don't forget, we actually have a dedicated uh, episodes tab down here. Now, I will briefly touch on this since I promised. When we go to the episodes tab, if we've already fetched all these episodes, why on earth will we wanna fetch them again? And the answer is, uh, you know, if you're clever enough, you guessed it, we don't, right? We're gonna want to add some sort of either session caching mechanism or, you know, writing this to disk or core data or in your database somewhere on device because it's unnecessary duplicated work. So that's all I've got. Drop a like before clicking to the next part. I'll see you there.